personal injury court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of McGuire versus Brooks. It's my understanding, Ms. McGuire, that you are suing for injuries you received when a nail gun shot a nail through your head. Yes. You're suing Mr. Brooks for those injuries, and you have $300,000 in medical expenses, $200,000 for future medical expenses, and $1.5 million for pain and suffering. You want this court to award you $2 million against Mr. Brooks. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Brooks, it's your position today that had Ms. McGuire waited for you and not been in the wrong place at the wrong time, this would have never happened, and thus this is not your fault. True? Yes, Your Honor. Now, let's get into the legal sauce. Now, Ms. McGuire, tell me, uh, how did you come to even hire Mr. Brooks? Yes, Your Honor. So, I am a musician. I okay. play the bass guitar and the ukulele for my indie rock band. I fool with a sax every once in a while. Hey, maybe you could join our band one day. <laughs> uh, so, I was headed on a three-month tour around the country visiting different bars. We had some sold-out um, areas, sold-out concerts, and I hired Mr. Brooks to build a recording studio in my home on the second floor. After the three months uh, had passed, I was really excited to see the work that Mr. Brooks had done on our recording Did you studio. think it was going to be done in three months? Uh, I was told that it was going to be near done when I got back. And Mr. Brooks, tell me about your company. How long have you been doing construction? Well, Your Honor, I've been in business for about 25 years. Long time. And basically, yes. Yes, Your Honor. And basically, for the last five of those years, I ran my own business, a bag of bricks remodeling, as a remodeling contractor. How, how long does something like this normally take? Well, it depends on the extravagancy of uh, the project. Uh, she wanted a state-of-the-art studio put in. So okay, she was going to do it right. Yeah, she was going to do it up. She was going to do it up. So. And so how long was it supposed to take in your estimation? Well, in my estimation, we should have been done about three, three and a half months, four months tops. So, Ms. McGuire, take me to the day that uh, this happened. What happened? Yes, Your Honor. So I arrived home. Um, I walked up the stairs in my house uh, and walked through a plastic drape. And I immediately stubbed my toe. Natural reaction, you know, you, you bend down to make sure that everything's okay. And, and where are you in, in your house? Where I am are on you? the second floor of my home. Okay, at the entrance of the studio? At the entrance of the studio, yes, and Your Honor. So then what happened? So then I stood back up, I turned my head, and I immediately bumped into something. I didn't know what it was, but immediately it, it was just this excruciating pain in the right side of my head. It, it felt like a bomb had exploded inside my head. I thought I was having a stroke. I wasn't sure what was going on. Somehow, I was able to pull my phone out of my pocket and dial 911, um, and, and the next thing that I I remember I woke up in the hospital, and that's when the doctor told me that there was a three-inch nail that had pierced my skull. So this is the actual nail that pierced my skull. It went in uh, right here in my temple behind my eye, and then it pierced up through my optic nerve and into my brain. And, and your you honor, must have I been am, scared out of your wit. I was scared to death, and, and now I am completely blind in my right eye. Sheriff Matt, could you get the nail? Let me see it. So this nail went into your eye? Yes, this, Your Honor. This was sticking in your head? That was what the surgeon pulled out of my skull. That's your head, Ms. McGuire? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Brooks, what do you call this kind of nail? Well, it's a galvanized nail. Okay, it's an industrial nail, isn't it? Yes, sir. So you had an industrial nail sticking in your head while you're trying to make a call? Yes, Your Honor. I believe it was shock. So I was able to call 911, um, and I, I actually you... did bring a recording of that tape, Your Honor. Well, let's hear that. You've submitted it to the court. Let's hear the 911 call. 911, what's your emergency? I, I, I have a terrible pain. Please, please help. It's in my head. It hurts so bad. Please help. I can't move. Hello? Ma'am, I'm still here. What's your address? Ma'am, you said you have something in your head. Hello? Hello? So, so when this cuts off, what happens? Uh, I blacked out. Apparently, there was blood everywhere. Miss McGuire, is that your blood? Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Brooks, tell me how you knew something bad had gone on. Well, Your Honor, basically, I pulled up and saw Miss McGuire going into her home, and uh, I yelled out to her, and she continued to go into the entrance of her home. And so, she looked like she was in a bit of a hurry. I, I imagine that maybe she had to use the bathroom or something like that. So, okay. I pulled in, gathered my notes, grabbed my fold, and I went in to uh, meet her upstairs uh, to the uh, top of the entrance. And when I got up there and went through the plastic draping... That's what did you when... see? That's when I saw. 
That's when I saw Mrs. McGuire laying in a pool of blood. And, so she's and lying on the floor. She's laying there. She's got a nail in her head. She's I, passed out and her blood's all over the floor? Well, Your Honor, I don't know what's in her head. I just see her laying in a pool of blood. And it, it just shocked me because she just came in. This had four, to freak five you ago. out, too. Yes, this sir. To I was shocked. I, didn't, I mean, so I grabbed my phone and I called 911. Did you know what had happened at that point? I had no idea what had happened. I'm trying to figure out. She just walked in the house. But you called 911. I called 911, sir. Now, Mr. Brooks, you, you see, this is pretty bad stuff. This is a bad injury, right? Oh, yes, sir. I empathize with her. And it, and it was your nail gun. Uh, yes, sir. It was my Your gun. nail. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Her injury. Uh, absolutely, Your But, Honor. but you absolutely. tell me today it's not your fault. Tell me why. Well, Your Honor, we had an agreement to meet at her garage. You did? At 1.30. Okay. At 1.30, and that way I can safely navigate her into the home. Okay. Now, she never mentioned a time. How are you so sure? I have text messages here, Your Honor. Okay. I have text messages that we Sheriff Matt, if you'll get the text this agreement. So you all had an agreement to, to meet at 1.30. Yeah, and she and actually showed up early. I'm looking at what you've submitted to this court, this text message that says, and I guess you're in the blue, it says, hey, things are coming along, when are you coming home, question mark. Yes, sir. And then in the gray, Miss McGuire, it says, my flight lands tomorrow at noon. I take it that's you. You remember this, right? Yes, Your Honor. Then in the blue, you, Mr. Brooks, you say, perfect, meet me in front of the garage at 1.30. 1.30. And then, Miss McGuire, you say, great. See you there. You understood y'all were going to meet at 1.30. Yes, Your Honor. And that right? is where the text yes. message and so, ended. So now, if, had she followed your instructions, take me through how this was going to happen. We we're going to go over the notes. I'm sure that we made the changes that she wanted to make. And then we were going to go into the construction area, safely into, so I can navigate her through. I know the hazards. I know the dangers. I know the phase that we had at that time. If she would have only waited. I see that you have submitted this uh, text message. You know, in courts, often it is a uh, one word against another word. Yes. It's always important to have documents. Yes, sir. You remember you were supposed to be there at 1 30, right? Yes, Your Honor. Y you came a little early? I arrived maybe five minutes early. And had you met him there at 1.30, he could have guided you through the house. I didn't know that I needed to be guided through the house. That's the point that it's I'm trying to make. He says, let zone. me get through what I'm talking about, Mr. Brooks. He told me to meet him there at 1.30. I get there. He's not at the garage. I expect maybe he has already gone inside. This is inside. not 1.30. Well, 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 but there was no car there, right? For him. His car wasn't there. I don't know what kind of car he drove. So you don't take any responsibility for your injuries? I do not take any responsibility for my entries, okay. no, Your Honor. I know you've been through a lot. I know you've been through a lot, but you do understand that had you come at 1.30, at least he would have been able to guide you through. But I was not made aware of any of the dangers of a construction area. Now, you are asking this court to award you $300,000 for past medical bills, right? Yes, Your Honor. And you're also looking at $200,000 for future meds. What kind of uh, future meds did you have in your idea of what's going to happen? I need therapy. Uh, I need for this to completely heal, which I'm still going to have to go to multiple doctor's checkups. Still got a long road ahead of you. I've got a very long road ahead of me, yes, Now, you're, you're also asking this court for $1.5 million for pain and suffering. Yes, Your Honor. There, there are a couple of different kinds of pain in every personal injury case. There's the pain you feel, your body, your head, your eye, and then what's on your mind and your heart. Uh, this is devastating. I, like I was saying, this has been my dream since I was seven years old. I'm having to cancel shows. I don't get the money for canceling the shows. This is my livelihood, and it is being completely taken away from me. I will never be able to see out of my right eye again. That's what your doctors are telling you. That is what my doctors w have said. Will you have to wear a patch? I mean, your, your eyeball is still there, right? My eyeball is still there. I will have to wear a patch for a good amount of time. It's not a pretty sight. I'm going to be honest. There is a nasty scar there. Now, it's an understatement to say nail in the head. When this nail went into your head... It went through my skull and into the fluid that is surrounding your brain. So it was sticking in the compartment where your brain is. Yes, it fractured my skull when it went into my head, Your Honor. So you, you do see, uh, Mr. Brooks, she's been through a lot and still got a lot to go. Regardless of whose fault it is. Absolutely. Do, do you yeah. feel badly for this? I feel terrible. I, I hate this incident even happened. So this must have broken you up, too. 25 years, I've never had anything to the extent happen. Never.
and really, Your Honor, to, to really be honest, she really wasn't properly dressed to go onto an active construction site. Well, I know I wear a robe to come in court. Is there something and you're supposed to wear in dressed, your construction honor. site? You're properly dressed. What's she proper dress? Not. Well, when she came into the... And we have pictures. I, I did bring a few pictures. Okay. Okay. okay, now, basically... Tell me what we're looking at here on the plasma. Your Honor, look here. But this is just coming up. This is just coming in. Look at all of the debris here. Look at all... There's things that... There's hazards that you can trip. She comes on the job site with flip-flops on. This is not a toe injury, it's a head injury. I understand it's the head injury. Okay. But if you're coming into a construction site, there's all kinds of things around. There's wood, there's nails sticking up out of wood. You gotta there's be prepared. All, you have to be prepared. You need a hard hat on. Well, how would she get a hard hat? Because before you actually get up to the stairs here, yes, there's sir. a bin at the entrance of the door when you come in that has all kind of personal protective equipment in it. Okay. Hard hats, glasses, gloves, anything you need to come in. And again, we would have been able to put those things on. You can return to the podium, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Uh, Ms. McGuire, did you see this big bin of hard hats and glasses? No, I did not. I was looking for the defendant, Your Honor. We keep talking about this yellow elephant in the room called the nail gun. Is that the nail gun that shot that nail in your head? Yes, This Your Honor. This is the nail uh, gun, Your Honor. It's a nail gun. Yeah, you can put it down there. I don't want you to shoot my sheriff here. Oh, no, no, Your Honor. What's that do that, uh, that helps you at a construction site? Well, basically, it, it, it's, it's a rapid fire uh, a nail gun. That way you're not hammering. Hammering is old school. So basically, it's compressed with air, and you can press it down okay. and shoot it off. It will not shoot off if it's not pressed down. Okay. I wanted to learn more about how this gun functioned, how you handle it. So this court uh, hired an independent general contractor who knows a little something about construction sites. His name is Jeff Lupton. Sheriff, could you get Mr. Lupton in here? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Lupton, come on in. Thank you, Your Honor. For the record, state your name, please. Uh, my name is Jeff Lupton. Mr. Lupton, what do you do as a general contractor? Uh, I do residential and commercial uh, additions, renovations, uh, build-outs. How long have you been in construction? I've been in business for 22 years. Mr. Lupton, how dangerous are nail guns? You see this nail gun on the uh, podium there? Yes, how sir. dangerous are they? Uh, they're extremely dangerous. Why? Uh, basically, uh, the way a nail gun uh, works is with a, a compressor, electric compressor, that compresses air to uh, 120 PSI through that hose connected to the nail gun itself and through bursts of high pressure air basically shoots, uh, shoots the nails out at a really, really high velocity. I understand you brought a couple of videos. Yes, sir, I did. Can, can you walk me through those? Absolutely. Kind of give you an example of, uh, of kind of how a, a nail gun would be used actively on a site where you're, where you're putting two pieces of wood together and some framing. And again, you can see that the nail just goes through there easily and that's two uh, three quarter inch pieces of, uh, of pine. If it shoots a nail through wood that easily, it must go through a human head like peanut butter. I would imagine so. It's pretty intense. Now, Mr. Lupton, Mr. Brooks testified that if the plaintiff had been wearing a hard hat, that hard hat would have protected her from this nail gun. Well, uh, while using safety equipment is always important on a construction site, a safety hat wouldn't necessarily have, have protected her directly from it. And we, sh we have an example here of a three-inch nail uh, going right through. It goes through the hard hat. hard hat. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Miss Brooks, you saw that video, right? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, seems like that hard hat wouldn't have stopped us from getting here today. True? <laughs> uh, yes, Your Honor. If I think you did a good thing as a business owner to provide those hard hats, Absolutely. but they're kind of for bricks and things falling, right? Absolutely. Folks, I think I've heard enough. I'm ready to render my decision. Every personal injury case, the plaintiff must prove that the defendant's wrong caused your injury. Here today, Ms. McGuire, you have shown that you could not have anticipated that a nail gun was loaded and ready to change your life waiting inside. This has affected your life, affected your life as a musician, and hurt you emotionally. It's a permanent injury, and that's why you're seeking a huge award from this court. Mr. Brooks, you tried to do what was responsible. You told her what time to be there. You told her to wait for you at the garage so you could walk through and escort her past the danger. But this happened, and this is why we are here today. Ms. McGuire, I find that you have proven that Mr. Brooks was wrong and that his wrong caused your injury. However, the evidence shows that he wasn't wrong by himself. You were wrong also. You were responsible for your injuries, partly. Here, 
You are asking this court to award you $300,000 for past medical bills, $200,000 for future medical bills, and $1.5 million for pain and suffering for a total award of $2 million that you seek. Because I find you 49% responsible for your injuries, I'm only going to award 51% of what you are requesting from this court. So I find in your favor and against Mr. Brooks in the amount of $1,020,000, and that is my final verdict. This matter is adjourned. Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Hoyt Tessner has to say. In every trial, the plaintiff must explain and, if possible, demonstrate exactly what happened to cause injury. Expert testimony and the video show just how powerful and dangerous a nail gun can be and demonstrate the extent and severity of Ms. McGuire's injury. This case shows how important it is to use power tools safely. Safety should always come first, especially around construction.